just to share um, just a personal testimony, kind of where I'm coming from tonight. Um, I was kind of in this phase maybe up until I was 20, um, just really like hungry to receive prophetic words. I wanted to receive like prophetic words from like famous prophets or I would like chase after people and just like be real hungry for the prophetic and, the, and, and it's not that that's a bad thing. But one of the ways that I really felt like the Lord challenged me to grow in maturity is to take the words that I'd already received and learn how to apply them to my life. And basically where I'm coming from tonight is there is a um, heavy, um, there, there's just a, a, a heavy lack of emphasis on our, um, on our part as we have to partner with prophetic words. I want us to understand that probably 99% of personal prophetic ministry is conditional. Probably about 99% of personal prophetic ministry is conditional. A lot of people become, get delusion. It's kind of two, it's two things. It could be that whoever prophesied you was way off anyways, and that's why it never came to pass. Or the other circumstance would be that they could have prophesied to you God's heart for you, your destiny, but you could have missed it because of you, your own personal, you missing it you not partnering with the Word. So that's kind of where I'm coming from, is I've kind of been in a season now where, we, like I said, we stay in God's Word, His Word, it's it's prophetic enough, the Scripture, this is our foundation, we're open to prophecy, receiving His Word, but I, I want us to, as we grow in maturity, it's not that we shouldn't be seeing the prophetic, but we don't need to chase after it. We can spend time saying, Lord, what are some words that you've given me? Help me to remember. I, I have prophecies from when I was like 12 years old. I still have them. I have them in my drawer. I know where they are. I listen to words that I receive pretty regularly. Rehearsing those, thinking about them, saying, Lord, how could I partner with that word? So I want I want to place an emphasis on that tonight. As we grow in the prophetic, let's try to take the words that we've already received and ask the Lord how we can partner with them rather than chase after, chasing after new words. Okay, so on your sheet, it says, Any word from God is significant because it reveals His desires. God does not give prophecies to people just so that they will feel good, be flattered, rejoice over what's been spoken, or even despair over words of correction. He wants partnership. He wants a response. He has a specific purpose that He wants to have fulfilled. So does that make sense to us tonight? That I, I have been in a lot of prophetic circles where it's just like, let's prophesy, let's prophesy, let's prophesy. And I've told people before, like where I'm at right now, I've received enough prophetic words where I just need to take what I've received and work on those <coughs> And again, it's not that you can't run into someone and they feel like a, they have a word for you. That That's all good and that's fine. But I just, I just want us to know that we're just not prophesying over people just for the heck of it. I, I've been around those type of environments and I really want to draw that to its attention. And we're, we're a growing prophetic community. If we walked into a mature prophetic community, maybe rooms full of 40, 50, and 60, most of the time... They can just prophesy at will, and it's going to be the word of the Lord. But a lot of times, we need it to put place serious emphasis on how do we help these words come to pass. I would rather have three words that I've worked on my whole life coming to an achievement than having a hundred awesome prophetic words and never even having one of them be fulfilled in my life. So that's important. I've talked about the importance of having recorders, recording the words that you get the words that you receive, trying to write them down. Every year, December 31st, every year, I go back and look at every prophetic word that I received that year. Every single one. <coughs> December 31st, right around there, every single year, before the new year turns, I look at all the words that I received and I said, Lord, is there any of these that I could have partnered with 
that haven't come to pass? Or how many of these words have I partnered with that have come to pass? So um, I just do that every year. I'm, every year at the end of the year, I'm really asking the Lord for vision for that next year, vision for you know, a lot of different things. Um, second paragraph here, too many believers recognize true words from God but do not realize that the words that came to them were in seed form. Many words we receive come to us in seed form, and we might have to nurture and cultivate them before they come to pass. And this is something that we, we have to um, grab hold of as we grow in the prophetic, because some words that we receive, it could be months, years, or even Year, you know, I mean, a long, long time for words to come to pass. I think a lot of us, if we just take whatever people prophesy over us as the now, maybe this month, then God could be speaking prophetically over your life for years to come. That's what I'm saying. It's good to rehearse and look back and go over the words that you receive. Words can come in seed form. There are words that God can speak even to someone tonight where there's more. The word says that we prophesy in part. You could receive a part of the puzzle and be asked to seek out the rest of it in its wholeness from the Lord Himself. A lot of times it's just, I chuckle, you know, people are like, well that, that doesn't really, you know, you maybe give a prophecy and they're like, well that, it, that doesn't really make sense. Well, I don't think that prophecy should necessarily be confusing, but I think it's an it's an invitation to really seek out the Lord and you go find out the meaning of this. And that's what I was saying, you know, the whole, well, what if I receive false prophecies? Well, I feel like if you are, if you have a list of prophetic words and you are soaking them in prayer, because remember, I oh, I, I want I want you guys, if 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 you ever have a flash of my face. And Samuel Company, in your mind, I always want you to, to have this. True prophecy always gives us a prayer agenda. True prophecy always gives us a prayer agenda. And this is where I'm going. It's just not about gathering together on Monday nights and getting prophetic words from everybody. But it's a serious matter of prayer. You, you sh we should be waking up, doing our devotionals, you know, if you, you're a night, w whenever you can to read the Word, and then maybe spending, you know, every couple of weeks or every couple of months going back over the prophetic words that you've received and really saying, praying them through, praying them through, Lord, what have you, what have you given me? What, what can I receive? And what I'm saying is that if you soak prophetic words through prayer and you listen to the Holy Spirit, you yourself more than likely are going to be able to root out words that were not from the Lord. Words that came from the spirit of man. You know what I'm saying? There are a lot of people that have missed prophetic words or they've gone off on rabbit trails. And when you ask them, like, how much time did you spend praying through that prophetic word? It's normally zero. Well, it was just the word of the Lord, so I chase after it. Well, I'm like, okay. So, turn to 1 Timothy 1. 118. 1 Timothy 118. The prophetic was um, something that came into the life of, of Timothy, and I, I think this is um, really pertinent to our discussion here tonight. 1 Timothy 118, this is Paul talking. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them, you may fight the good fight of faith, holding on to faith and a good conscience. Hear that one more time. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them, you may fight the good fight of faith, holding on to faith and a good conscience. I looked up that, that phrase, by following them. It says, prophecies once made about you, so that by following them. In the Greek, that word, that, that phrase there is, in them, in their sphere, in their power. 
So if you want to underline by following them, Paul is giving Timothy specific instruction about following the prophecies that were given him. What is he really saying? He says, in them, in their sphere, in their power, fight the good fight of faith. So prophetic words, therefore, they're given to us and that we can stand in them to wage warfare. Has anybody experienced this yet? Where you received a prophetic word and you literally had to stand in the word to wage warfare for your destiny. Because a lot of times what happens when prophetic words are given, there's immediately a challenge that's released. You're in a meeting and you're prophesying over someone that you know, there's about to be a door of opportunity open and, and all of a sudden, bam, they've got the toughest week of their life that week. What's happening? That word is being tested. <coughs> Let's look, look at this again. Look, look at what Paul is writing to Timothy. Pay careful attention. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you. So that by following them, living in them, in their sphere, in their power, you may fight the good fight of faith, holding on to faith and a good conscience. So right after that it says, we fulfill prophetic words that are spoken over us by fighting the good fight with faith and a good conscience. Again, there is partnership that's required. Personal prophetic ministry is conditional. Just because it's spoken over your life does not mean that it's going to come to pass. Faith and a good conscience. This is words that, that Paul is strongly encouraging Timothy in. Flip over to Numbers 13. I'll give you another example. I've mentioned this before, but you have the nation of Israel who is basically given the coolest prophecy of all time, right? They've been delivered, they're coming out of bondage. Some of us, we've been there, we're in a season of struggle. And someone prophesies this incredible word of destiny. And I, I've said this before, but if you look at the nation of Israel, there are only two out of a mil over a million people that inherited the promise of God. You don't need any more biblical evidence <coughs> to make a stand for it. It's conditional. Just because a prophet prophesies something over you does not mean that it's going to come to pass at all. Uh, Numbers 13, 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do, do it. Does that sound like faith? But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We, see, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. So one of the main strategies that the enemy uses against people is to make them feel like grasshoppers in their own sight. One of the main strategies that the enemy uses against us. This is just this, this concept um, that I want you to grab hold of when we're talking about partnering with prophetic words.
Faith leads to the occupation of the promises of God, the prophetic. Faith, Joshua and Caleb, led to the fulfillment of the prophetic word that they received. Fear always leads to rebellion. Fear will always lead you, lead you toward rebellion. It's the number one reason why words are not fulfilled in people's lives. Fear. One of the main strategies of the enemy is to make us feel like grasshoppers in our own sight. Really, really encourage you just to go back and meditate on 1 Timothy 1, 18 and 19. Make it a daily devotional every day. Think about this. Paul is giving Timothy strong words here about the prophetic words that were spoken over his life. He was to stand in them. Stand in the prophetic words and wage war on the enemy. It's hard to wage war on the enemy in the prophetic words that you've received when you're always chasing after new words. You guys understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. We, we, it's not that we don't want to chase after, and again, I just want to, the Word of God is our foundation. We have prophetic words. But if we spend as much time focusing on how to partner with the words that we've already been given, spend time doing that. And when new words come, take them and apply them to your life as well. But we've got to get out of this rut among prophetic people of constantly wanting new words, new words, new words. Let's just take the ones that we've already been given and allow them to partner. So faith. Personal prophetic ministry is almost always conditional. New Covenant prophecy should focus on invitation rather than declaration. This is another thing that throws people for a loop. I want to break it down. New Testament prophecy is about invitation, not about declaration. When we prophesy over people, we are inviting them into God's heart for them rather than making declarations and saying, this is going to happen. Invitation is you're inviting them to partner with the Word of the Lord. You're submitting it to them. This is the difference between Old Covenant prophecy and New Testament prophecy. Every <coughs> believer in Jesus has the Holy Spirit of God to lead them and direct them. We submit words, prophetic words to people and allow the Holy Spirit to steward them and guide them into God's heart for them. Many, many people in the body of Christ just view the prophetic as a declaration. They spoke it, therefore it's coming to pass. And then it says, watch your language on the bottom. 58 exclamation points. There's a difference between, between saying, thus saith the Lord, and I believe the Lord is saying. There's a difference between saying, this will come to pass, and I think God has this for you. Hmm. This is His will, versus I'm submitting this word to you, and please pray about it. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think there's just a, a word knowledge in the room for uh, um, eye healing. If you have problems seeing, just vision, vision, the Lord wants to heal some vision. Okay. Whenever you feel it, you want to address that. Okay. Does anyone have an eye problem? Okay. Thanks, Brandon. You're welcome. So I, I just want to make sure, is everyone clear on this? I know it's it's kind of heavy. we got to think about it. Yes? I've got, I got a question because I see, I mean, like in Acts 21, when Agabus talks to Paul and he says, thus says the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So there's, I see there's a place for declaration. Sure. So how does that fit? Where, how do you know when it is? Because if, if there's a, a, a word from God that's really coming, then isn't it God saying? Mm -hmm. And... And where do you, when do you do that, and when do you back off and say, I think this is what the Lord is saying? Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and I said 99%. You know, I do believe that there are, there are major prophets in the body of Christ that can operate in high levels of revelation and bring forth a word from the Lord. And, and going back to, I guess, what we've talked about, part of the redemptive process in that is, is you know, it, I, I think you remember that teaching is, is sometimes the response is it just simply repent Agabus saying, thus says the Spirit of the Lord. And obviously, you know, we have him in Scripture. The famine did come to pass, and Paul was bound. So I think that sometimes, for me, it's always erring on the side of partnership means no matter no matter whether, if it's a thus saith the Lord word, or it's I think God is saying, I'm always going to take the route of trying to partner. If there's any partnership that seems to be required in it. I mean, I'll give you an example. I've had two or three words where I prayed over these words consistently and I didn't feel like the Lord was really pressing me that there was only any partnership required with the word. Um, I mean, I, I tell like kind of a lot of my, a lot of my prophetic history is that I've not only not sought a lot of the encounters that I had, but they were totally blindsided me. They just simply came to me. You know, it says in Hosea, I'll, I, I will address a people that didn't even cry out to me. So any any words that come, like I said, I didn't say 100% of words are conditional. There are some words that we receive, that, but I would always be real weary and leery of, thus saith the Lord. You know, is there some type of partnership that can be required of positioning, so to say, in, in faith? I mean, even, even that thing, I mean, Graham Cook says all the time that unbelief will kill prophecy. Maybe the simple partnership is believing by faith that this is what the Lord, the, the Lord said to me, and I'm going to stand in the promise and wage warfare from there. Um, you know, so that that's kind of how I would I would, I would answer that question. Um, with the thus thus say the Lord's, you know, continue to seek it. True prophecy gives us a prayer agenda. You know, there are go ahead. Well, because that part of part of me is still. You get an experience of, of doing that and stepping out and, and, and prophesying over people. And my natural inclination is, is not to say, let's say the Lord. Yes. My natural inclination is to say, I think this is what God's saying because I don't have the confidence sometimes sure. that this is really what God's saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I, I'm wondering if sometimes, for me, that's that's problematical saying, I think this is what the Lord's saying. Mm -hmm. Not because I want to say, thus says the Lord, but but because I'm dealing with my own confidence that, that I am hearing from God. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, and that, I just, the, that Romans 12, it says that they that prophesy, prophesy according to their level of faith. You know, you can prophesy at times with very high levels of faith, and then other times you're, you, you've got really low faith. And that's what I'm saying is when I, for me, rather than, <coughs> rather than being unsure, to me it's a sign of humility. Hmm. When I say I think that the Lord is saying, I'm pretty sure, almost sure He's saying it, but I want to humble myself and say, hey, I, I can miss it. You know, the more that I read books and read stuff from prophets, it's just like, it's this whole thing of the more that I know, the less that I know. I, I'm capable of totally, totally missing the mark. So, you know, and, and a lot of times, I mean, I listen to people when they prophesy, I and mean, a lot of times, like, for me personally, when I prophesy, if I say, says the Lord, it's normally like a scripture, it's something that is, is from His Word, and like I'm saying, it's part of the generational thing, like 70s, 80s, and 90s when the prophetic came to the church, you started it with, thus saith the Lord, or ended it with, thus saith the Lord, this kind of new type of language really comes from Rick Joyner, Bill Johnson says this a lot too, just the, the posture, the approaches. This is an invitation. I'm placing this before you. It's not like a sign of I'm not believing in it. But I do understand what you're saying. And especially as we go out and do do ministry, I mean, and, and like I said, we're moving to Walmart. If, if, I, if I sense that, you know, someone doesn't even know the Lord. For example, like I was, I, I, uh, we ate at Chili's today, and, you know, like, uh, Morgan and Bella and I, and there's, Two ladies that were on the side, they were like, you know, drinking beer, cussing up a storm, whatever. And I just realized that if I had any type of spiritual language, it was just going to turn off to them. And, and as we're leaving, I just turned to them and I said, hey, I've got this special gift 
that I was created with, and I, I just call it a, a seer. I'm a seer. And he's like, I see, I see your past, and I can see into your future. Do you want to know what I see? And they were like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, so <laughs> just gave them a word of encouragement, you know, and, and gave them spiritual language just kind of bundled up in this type of package and stuff. But that's something I, I think is like it's hard to get out of this, you know, when we start ministering on the streets, you just feel like you have to give it like Jesus language and different things. And sure, be bold. Like I'm, I'm not saying like, <coughs> you know, avoid saying Jesus. I'm always going to say Jesus. I really don't care. I don't care if you get offended or not. But, you know, there's different ways that we can approach ministry and, and different things like that. So, um, I, I just, and personally receiving prophetic words. I would much rather someone, I feel a lot more comfortable someone submitting a word to me rather than telling me, you know, that, that type of thing. I don't know if you've ever received a word that was just overbearing. It was just like, you better receive it or, or you know, or else. Um, so, any, any other questions about just what we talked about here? Um, yeah, go ahead. I haven't studied um, the New Testament in, in terms of what you're talking about there, saying this says what or I think. Mm -hmm. But I don't recall anyone saying, I think this is what the Lord's saying. Is it is that a response, do you think, to the seventies and eighties, where people did say, Thus saith the Lord mm -hmm. and, and there were people that were doing that and it obviously was not. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and that's kind of what I was uh, what I kind of address at the beginning is and I've spent a lot of time studying a lot of the roots from, you know, from Toronto and Kansas City Prophets and all that stuff. But, yeah, I think that it's a response. And I just think that, and like I said, there's kind of two things. Like, you either have, you know, either we kind of kick prophets out of the church because they gave a lot of words that never came to pass. And prophets want to tell people, well, it's because you didn't partner with it. And the people want to say to the prophets, well, it's because you totally missed it. It wouldn't have mattered if I did anything anyway. So I think that I think is, like I said, from one standpoint, it could be seen as like a backdoor out. Like, just in case I missed it, I think that he's saying it to me. I'm more approaching it from the standpoint of I humbly submit this to you. I'm capable of missing it just like anybody else. But, oh, yeah, I definitely think that uh, it was a... You jump to the other side, thus saith the Lord, versus I think that the Lord is saying. But, you know, it, it's still largely in part among prophetic communities. A lot of people use the thus saith the Lord type of, type of language for sure. Um, but there's not really, you know, the New Testament it's not necessarily addresses the, I, I think that the Lord says, or, or things like that, or thus saith the Lord outside that Acts 21. So I, I hope that we're just going to transition into some worship prophetic ministry and we'll do this word and on. But I just hope that this inspires you to take a look at the prophetic words that you've already received. Does anyone have like on a recorder or a piece of paper words that you've received? Okay. And I know probably some of us that don't raise our hands, we have a lot of words. We just remember a tenth of them or a twentieth of them, or, and, and really, I really want to, true prophecy always gives us a prayer agenda. Just as you pray about other things, you should be daily praying through the prophetic words that people have given you. Make it a serious matter of prayer, and ask the Lord, how can you partner in faith with these words? Fear leads to rebellion. Know that when you receive words about your destiny, your future, fear will always come and try to root out those words. They come in seed form. That's a phrase that's on your paper that I want you to take with you. Many prophetic words come in seed form. It's an invitation to hold on to them, to cultivate them, to foster them until they come to maturity, possibly in later seasons. Okay? Make sense? 